What's going on everybody? Sean Pierce Johnson here and I want to tell you about one of my hobbies outside of music. I love movies. I love movies of all different types. Dramas, comedies, sci-fi, fantasy, and a couple horror films, but not a whole lot. The point is, I've always loved movies, since the time I was a kid, from my classic Disney upbringing to my more recent modern leanings of more artsy-fartsy films that you might find on the Criterion Collection. But over the years, I have found some movies that I really became attached to because of my attachment to music. Now, some of these are guitar-centric, some of these are more band-centric, some of these are biopics, and some of them are complete works of fiction. But of these seven films, I highly recommend that if you are a guitar player, you check them out. You will learn something, and you will enjoy them. Let's start with not necessarily my favorite, but one that I definitely consider to be an iconic guitar moment in film history, Crossroads, starring the one and only Karate Kid himself, Ralph Macchio. Crossroads is a somewhat obscure 1980s sort of coming of age movie, I guess you could say, starring Ralph Macchio as Eugene Martone, a classical guitar student at the Juilliard School. High level studying if I do say so myself. But there is one thing that sets him apart from all of his classmates. He has an intense fascination for the blues. And this movie basically focuses on that passion and that interest, his interest in the blues, and especially the legend of Robert Johnson selling his soul to the devil at the crossroads. The film climaxes where Eugene and the devil's guitar player Jack Butler, here played masterfully by the one and only Steve Vai himself, have their head cut and duel that's punctuated by a, an amazingly good miming job by Machio of a classical guitar composition that he plays on a Telecaster, no less. Ultimately, Machio gets the best of Vi in the end, which of course would only happen in film, but it is the that juxtaposition of a kid who's just young and hungry with a guy who's been handed everything, albeit with some dubious, you know, way of getting it, but it's the point of a kid with a passion versus somebody who's been given something and trying to butt heads and seeing who can come out ahead of the other. It's an incredibly great soundtrack curated and managed along by the one and only Ry Cooter, so there's lots of great slide playing. The blues playing is phenomenal in this. Vi is in top 1980s form. It's just a really great music related movie. But I have to give credit where credit is due. Machio does a great job of making it look like he's actually playing the guitar. Next up on my list is no stranger to any music movie related list. It is This Is Spinal Tap. Now of course, this is a comedy, and it's a great one. I don't care what people say about weeping because it hits too close to home. For me, it is hilarious because it hits so close to home. It of course follows the fictional band Spinal Tap on their sort of end of the road tour, if you will. Concerts get canceled, gigs that remain are not very well attended, and there's a little bit of a John and Yoko thing going on with one of the members, and people die and members get fired. The point is that this has a lot of truth in it. And that's why so many people in the music business love it so much. Ultimately, what I love so much about it is that the music is actually pretty darn good late 70s, early 80s hard rock and metal. Sure, there are some cheeky lyrics, if you will, if you get my meaning, but the point is the fact that the actors who play the main members of the band would eventually go on to tour as Spinal Tap after this film's release is pretty impressive if I do say so myself. If you like your movies funny as hell and full of great music moments, this is Spinal Tap is one to check out. One of my perennial favorite soundtracks as a kid was the soundtrack of this movie, and that is That Thing You Do. The film follows the fictional band The Wonders, a small town Pennsylvania band who hit it big with their single That Thing You Do. It shows their rise and ultimate fall, and it does a pretty darn good job of painting the picture of 1960s pop. You see the one hit wonder. You see the way that labels would showcase their artists back in the day. 
you see the way that certain people within the business act and behave. To this day, I still love the soundtrack to this film. Great 1960s style pop rock in the school of the Beatles, the Birds, you name it. Anybody really of the British invasion is going to have some sort of inspiration on the music in this film. But what makes it even better is that the actors actually perform it on screen convincingly. If you like your music a little harder and a little heavier, but want something similar to that thing you do, check out Rockstar, starring the one and only Marky Mark himself, Mark Wahlberg, and Jennifer Aniston. The story is loosely based on that of Tim the Ripper Owens, who of course was the Judas Priest cover band singer who ultimately wound up fronting the actual band. It's a pretty cool Cinderella story to start out, but you quickly see how the Cinderella story turns dark. And ultimately what I take away from this film is that it shows you what's more important as a musician, especially a songwriter, is that you write the music that's in your heart and in your mind. You follow what makes you happy and you keep the things around you that make you happy. Ultimately, at the end of the film, he's not fronting the band. He's playing in small clubs in Seattle. So it's a very cool period picture, late 80s, early 90s, seeing that evolution of a guy who thought he was gonna have everything ultimately want to give it all up for something that's going to make him feel better in the long run. When it comes to musical comedies, I don't think you get any better than the Blues Brothers. Personally, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd do an amazing job of playing Jake and Elwood Blues, two blues-obsessed white boys from Chicago who happen to throw together a band to get their childhood home saved from the tax assessor. Now the best part is, this band is chock full of talent. Steve Cropper, Donald Duck Dunn, the horn section from Saturday Night Live, this band is full of session heavyweights. Then there's the cameo appearances. John Lee Hooker, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin. My God, those are already three top level blues and R&B musicians that are appearing maybe briefly, and some in more extended roles in this film. The comedy and the music come together to make a magical formula. I think without this movie, the School of Rock after school music program would not exist. And that is, well, School of Rock. This is pretty much Jack Black at his like 2004, 2005 best. Wacky humor, craziness, and well, generally, it's basically Jack Black in Tenacious D turned down about five notches and with a bit of a language filter on him. What's most amazing is that the kids that are in the band actually played the instruments that they're assigned in the band in real life. In fact, in the promotional period leading up to the film's release, Jack Black and the kids would go on shows like The Tonight Show or Late Night, and they would actually perform in front of the live studio audience and do a pretty darn good job, too. It is a story of a lovable loser who finally accepts that he needs to make something of his life and does it in a very cool way, sharing music with kids and getting them into it as much as he is. So the last film that I always recommend guitar watch is one that I still watch over and over to this day, mostly because I love the music so much, and that is Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash biopic starring Joaquin Phoenix, who does a masterful job of portraying the man in black. It is haunting how good Joaquin Phoenix is at portraying Johnny Cash. His voice sounds very similar, he does a really good job of miming the guitar moves, and it is just it's chilling to watch this story unfold. Both Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon do a great job in this film, and it remains a favorite of mine to this day. I want to point out that these are not necessarily in my order of preference. I don't really like doing that. I'm just giving you these as an example of something to watch that I think you'll enjoy if you're a musician, especially if you're a guitar player. You can learn a lot from these movies, but you're also going to be entertained. Now, I want to hear from you guys. Are there some music-related movies that I didn't mention that you think I should check out? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And be sure you click the subscribe button when you see it as I get ready to go to GitCon 2017. And until next time, my friends, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson, and I wish you all great tone and happy stomping. Cheers.